This lens is for Nikon 1 series cameras, like the V1 through the V3 and J1 to J5. It's a bit different than many other 1 series lenses, as it's a power drive zoom. It's quiet, fast operating, and designed with the videographer in mind. Here's a quick refresher on the Nikon 1 system. These are 1 inch sensor, or CX format, cameras that have their own set of lenses and other accessories. There is an FT1 F mount adapter, which allows you to use Nikon DSLR lenses on the 1 system with a few limitations. And the crop factor of the CX sensor is 2.7x. The 2.7x is what makes the field of view of this 10 to 100 lens be approximately a 27 to 270 millimeter field of view equivalent. That's quite a versatile range, so that you can go from this to this in an extremely short period of time. In Nikon's literature, they say that this lens is targeted for videographers. But before we go there, let's talk still images. Now you're not gonna see me putting up test charts with this lens and other lenses. There are plenty of sites that do that, and I'm not all that excited about test charts. For me, I test a lens the way that I'm going to use that lens out in the field. How did it go? It did great. Keep in mind, this lens is f4.5 to f5.6 throughout the zoom range. Combined with the smaller CX sensor, you're not gonna be using this lens for paper thin depth of field effects or as a dedicated portrait lens. This lens is all about doing a good job across a very wide zoom range. Also, because it's a power zoom lens, it's getting you from wide to telephoto and back with the smoothness of a video-oriented zoom rocker with three speeds depending on how far you push or pull the zoom switch. While shooting still images, one pleasant surprise was how close I could get to the subject. This is not advertised as a macro lens, but if you set this lens to 100 millimeters, you can get very close to your subject. Here's Darth Vader at 10 millimeters and at 100 millimeters with the same composition. The edge of the lens is less than three feet away from the subject. Now, if I were going out into the field to mostly shoot wide angle landscape photos, would I take this lens? Mm, I might, or I might not. It's the heaviest one series lens that I own. It has the bulk and weight that would normally be associated with a mid-range F-mount lens. Nikon 1 lenses are usually smaller and lighter, albeit without the power zoom and the flexibility to go from 10 millimeters to 100 millimeters. In fact, there is a 1 series 10 to 100 lens available for a more traditional 1 series size and weight lens, but it doesn't have the power zoom. On to using this lens for video. The first thing that you might notice with the 10 to 100 power zoom is the very quiet operation. Nikon uses special technology for the focusing of this lens so that it's completely quiet. That's not usually a problem if you're using off-camera microphones and recorders, but if you're doing something fast and plan to refocus while shooting video, you don't have electronic focusing sounds intruding into your audio. And it's the same with the power drive for zooming. It's silent. Okay, those are some of the important technical qualities for both still images and video. What I really make these reviews for though is to talk about my real world experience with the lens. Is it manageable in a variety of circumstances? And does it live up to its name and price tag? For this lens, my answers are yes and yes for a few reasons. One, despite the larger size of the lens compared to the other one series lenses, I felt quite free with it. One moment I'm doing a wide angle landscape, the next shot I'm at 100 millimeters, photographing a bird or even some plant up close. Like many all-in-one zooms, if you see it with your eyes, chances are you can compose the photo exactly the way you'd like with this lens. There's a ton of flexibility in that regard. Two, it really is a great complement to the one series. It works exactly as expected. It balances decently with the lightweight one system bodies. And despite the wide zoom range, the photos are sharp and it does the CX sensor format justice. And three, best of all, you're really extending the qualities of the Nikon One system into video camcorder territory. While the newer One system models have more video options than my little V1 here, I can set 1080p at 30 frames per second and shoot all day with it. Zoom in, zoom out, tripod, no tripod, I really feel like I can confidently use my V1 as a video making machine now in addition to using it as a still camera. Is this lens for everyone? No. In fact, 
If it weren't for a super special, secret for now, long form video project, I probably would not have bought this lens. However, since I'm going to be shooting a ton of video in several different environments, I wanted an easy to use lens in a lightweight package. Really a, a do it all setup with the power zoom while taking advantage of a camera and lens system that I've already bought into. My other strong consideration was the Panasonic GH4 in the micro four thirds market. But in that case, I'd be talking about taking on another camera body and buying into another system for me right now with as far as I need to go with it. It made sense for me to extend my investment into the one system rather than start from scratch. The answer for you and your priorities for lenses and video might be completely different. All in all, so far so good with this little giant. Expect to see more with it as I create more content. And if you want to see other equipment that I use to shoot video and a little bit more about my decision-making process before I purchased this lens, take a look at the video that I posted earlier this week at the link above.